So both of the yield maps, one is a kind of a zoomed in version of the same rectangular roughly field, is that right? Actually, the one that has them, this one here, is what they what they call is a, uh, a vegetation health map. It shows the different the healthy vegetation and the different colors that are showing. And I included this one just to show where two existing pipelines cross my land. And, and so what you've circled on each of these um, two almost almost infrared kind of looking uh, pages here that show the health and then it looks like to be a, a yield map. It's a yield map, the other one. Uh, and that's that's showing where you said you have two existing pipelines? Yes, if you look, I'd like to point this out on the, on the map that was submitted, you know, uh, from Summit Carbon, I've pointed out the two existing pipelines. And you can see the scar that comes across from the southeast and going to the northwest. And there are two pipelines there. And I just wanted to make a point, make to point that out. And these are the same pipelines that uh, Marvin Lugert was talking about. But they come across ours. And the first one was there before we owned the land. It was the dome pipeline. And it was installed in 1975, so it's 45 years ago. The second one is, uh, and it's a 12 inch pipe and reported the carries LP. Uh, adjoining side by side to the dome pipeline is the Alliance pipeline, which was built in 1998, 25 years ago. And we, we purchased the land the year before Alliance was built. Um, so basically the dome pipeline was there and then because a corridor was basically established, another pipeline came along and it was much easier to get approval. Um, I included these maps just because it's been 25 to 45 years and you can see on the map of the team uh, with your permit uh, that they submitted that you can see the pipeline. It's the difference in the soil, the difference in the greenery. And then if you look at the yield maps, it shows up on the yield maps every year. It has since the beginning. And it shows up on the vegetative map. That one really shows up. So you can tell the crop does not grow like it should. And we've had problems with, since the beginning with compaction, settling, drainage, and of course the crop, the decreased crop yields. So it's really pronounced when you look at the maps and you can follow it even further. It follows along to the neighbors too, you know, and there have been spots that have been just low um, that have never been corrected. There were many promises made and then they kind of tried it first, but these pipelines had. And by doing that, uh, I mean, that was one of the main reasons we were concerned about having another one. So we said, no, you know, um, move it to someone else that, that wants it. And because we've been dealing with this for years. Um, and I did include, I'm not sure if the study, the, the uh, there's an Ohio State University study that I included there. And it, it's that same Brem one, but this one actually is the original article. And it's Teresa Brem and Steve Coleman. And it's a Soil Science, uh, uh, Soil Science Society of America journal. It was, yeah. So this is the whole thing. And they're basically saying that this disturbance, you know, they're, in their studies, it, it is, the disturbance persisted five years following the pipeline installation. And they're saying even with the current best management practices of pipeline and installation and remediation employed by the three companies that they worked with or research, it was insufficient to come in and 
crop yield loss. And they say this can go on for many more years in their study. That's just one study I thought I would, besides, I would present besides whatever I have personally. So the study is obviously one thing, but the, the unref can clearly see the scar of those existing pipelines some 20 and 45 years later. Wouldn't you agree that that is rather than you know, a study by a university, we have firsthand unrefutable knowledge of pipeline effects. That's right, and we, and we can see it. Harvest, you can see it when you're coming across those areas. And uh, it, it was soft and everything for years. So we've had those problems, and uh, we, we set it from the very beginning. We have two already. We aren't interested in another one. Um, well, that was the, the thought, and that was uh, one of our reasons. Do you feel, sir, like through this process, by you exercising your right to say no thank you to this for-profit pipeline that you have been... What's wrong with you? Yes, we really do. Um, we did say access to our property. And those cases are ongoing as you're ongoing, yes. <clears throat> um, and again, you don't, I mean, I don't suppose you have a problem with a, a company with an economic interest and to take a business risk and, and do a project, but is it your position? For reasons they say by come, coming across into North Dakota, and uh, it's a pollutant. And um, I know you, as a um, public service commission, have to make the decisions. And you told us up front what we um, I don't quite understand how this pipeline itself, carbon dioxide, contributes to the energy in our state. The, one of the things I thought that was interesting. And I know well, that's one of the things you have to consider. And, sir, there you're referencing um, <clears throat> one of the items that the, the PSC has to consider related to will the construct proposed locations then go on and on, ensuring that energy needs are met and fulfilled in an orderly and timely fashion. Is that what you're referencing? That's what I'm referencing, yes. And when Mr. Powell today admitted and the application on its face says that this is for permanent sequestration of CO2 into the ground in North Dakota, can you, in your wildest imagination, think how that is ensuring that energy needs are met and fulfilled in North Dakota? No, I can't. I, I have a hard time understanding that. And would you submit that on that basis alone, this commission must, by the very factors they have to consider, deny this application because it has nothing to do with ensuring energy needs being met? Yes. All right. Anything further for you, sir? Uh, we are very concerned about the safety. And I know that's one of the other things you need to consider or, or, or have to consider. It's a hazardous waste pipeline with very high pressures. I think of the danger to our community uh, caused by a pipeline blowout. It's unknown. SCS won't review the plume models uh, of a pipeline break and the possible extent of danger. Um, we do have, I counted about 10 neighbors within a mile of where this pipeline comes across. Um, I guess we're expected to accept their words, and these were their words, that they are comfortable with the risk. Um, I'm not feeling as comfortable as SCS is when we look at the videos and reports of Sartation, Mississippi, and such. So we're just not comfortable with the safety on it. In, in terms of the safety and then in terms of potential risks and liability, have you had an opportunity to research your own current insurance policy, which you pay premiums on to hopefully protect you and your uh, family in terms of liability from damages on your property? Yes, I have. Um, we'd heard where there were insurance companies that weren't able or weren't 
were saying they couldn't insure liability, uh, studied our policy, got the complete policies. I went through the whole thing and basically found that there's a pollutant exemption and this is a pollutant. So we wanted to make sure that we, we were covered or weren't. So we did ask our insurance agents to give us a letter and that is the letter that I've included in the package from them. Received it on last Friday. He didn't date it, but it is Friday the 13th that we got it. So, but it's saying basically that uh, it's it, that the pollutant exemption means we are not covered for certain liabilities. All right. Um, <clears throat> the, you and your wife depend on this uh, ground for your economic well-being. We do. And you believe that the existence of this pipeline is evidenced by the ones you already have would harm that economic impact, not to even mention the, the safety and risk issues. That's true. We also have considered tile, and we would like to do that. Um, originally, the first two pipelines were making it quite expensive to tile because they would have to have been done in sections on each side of the pipeline, and then there would have to have been a pump to take it up and over into the ditch so it could flow down the ditch. Well, and then there's another pump on the bottom side They would have to pump it up in a way. So it was two pumps involved, and then you go on another pipeline, that's the third pump, so it will be prohibitive to do that. Besides, there's no electricity close by, so just to run that would be terrible. So, I like to tile, but uh, even having another one, another uh, pipeline would not be good. And the land value is another thing that we, uh, I'm very concerned about. You know, um, yes, two, maybe someone could accept, accept two pipelines that have been there for years, but another pipeline, what's that going to do to the value of our land? And it is prime Red River Valley land. Would, would you agree with Mr. Teagues that, that you may be petitioning uh, the assessor in terms of property tax reduction if the, all right, which would be a net negative economic impact as a result of this pipeline, correct? Definitely would. All right, nothing further, sir. Thank you. And I, well, I better offer formally offer um, LS1. Is there any objection to LS1? No. Mr. Pellin? No objection. Great. LS1 is admitted. Uh, Mr. Mulberg, any questions? Very briefly, have you have you petitioned for a reduction in, in your taxes because of the existence of the Dome and Alliance pipelines? We have not. The first pipeline was there before before we even owned it. Okay. The other one was 25 years ago. We did not. Okay. Thanks. Mr. Pelham, any questions? Oh, yeah. Mr. Shook? No questions, sir. Commissioner Christman? Were, were that where the pipeline comes out of section 35 and down into section 2 way at the west end yes i see what looks like a farm about a half mile north and another one about a half mile south are, are one of those your home or do you live out in this area uh if you look to the one to the south that was our farm home we live in fargo now we're retired and we sold that out, but there's a young family who lives there now. Someone is with you. Yes. Okay, thanks for all the questions. Commissioner mm -hmm. Howie Hoffer. Thank you. You said you received that Farmers Union insurance letter this past month? Friday. April 7th? Uh, yes, I said the 13th. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was the 7th. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Mr. Dawson? No questions. Thanks for coming. Any redirect? Um, in, in terms of uh, petitioning for the taxes, obviously the, the first pipeline was there. You kind of had to swallow on that one. The second one you've tried to deal with, but a third one is just a, a bridge too far. Is that fair? That's correct. All right, nothing further. Great. Thank you.